before I moved into the foyer, I was into like a lot of drugs and got in with the wrong crowd. I was just sitting on my ass all day, doing nothing, just eating, drinking, smoking, doing drugs and all sorts. Before participating in the health programme, my health was really poor. I, I was really lazy. I couldn't be bothered to do anything. I weren't eating properly. I weren't doing everything I should do to keep me healthy. But since I've been here, the staff have helped me turn things around. Health isn't just about eat healthy, go for a walk. It You can actually have fun with it. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> with it on your hand. <laughs> the your health is... Um, given uh, young people the opportunity to have tasters in areas such as how to eat properly, um, physical activity, and how to look after their mental health and well-being. If young people are going to achieve their potential, they do need to be able to learn and to develop their skills, but they can't do either of those if they're not healthy. So what this programme's done is allowed us to offer a much more holistic service to young people right around the country. We know that if your nutritional balance is out, then it's very easy to be mentally depressed, um, unhappy. We can bring far more um, happiness into their lives. A brighter approach to their future can be generated from just what they eat. I want you to taste it. You don't make stuff without tasting it. And just wait. Wait and see what happens on your tongue. Mm, I know. You did that. <laughs> it's all too easy for youngsters to waste their money effectively buying convenience foods which ultimately don't do them any good, leave them hungry, spend their money. And so we try to attack those principles. Keep moving that around. In a minute, you're going to get joined by our friendly little aubergines here just eating healthily, you know, and changing what I eat because it's changed the way I feel. You know what I mean? It's made me feel a lot more better than what I were, than what I have been. Instead of eating fast food, I'd rather eat salad, like a chicken salad or something healthy. We're done, we're done, we're done. It's time. We're on it. It's always an advantage to know stuff, you know what I mean? And then, like, if someone asks you, oh, can you cook this? And you can say, yeah, I can cook it. I think I've seen them improve, brighten and develop a broader range of things they're willing to try. If you're looking after yourself, what you put in, then you've got the energy to go and do things, want to do physical activities, and then you're, you're looking after your mental well-being as well. We've got two ex-foyer residents from Redbridge Foyer who come and deliver makeup sessions here. Their motivation and the confidence building they bring to our young ladies and our young men, it's really bringing something back that they've bought, got from the foyers. And our young people absolutely love that. You know, it's, it's them in two or three years. I'm an ex-resident of Redbridge Foyer. Um, which is where I actually started my business four years ago. Um, Rebridge Foyer actually helped me, um, helped that process and gave me a lot of advice. Do you remember what the cleansing does? What that stage is for? Removing dead skin cells. <laughs> now I do. Yeah, <laughs> what I help you out. We do work, makeup workshops and pampering sessions and it's really nice to see the residents just enjoying themselves and getting together and communicating and conversating with one another. Um, since the Foyer Health Programme, I've seen a, a vast change in the residents. Their confidence and their self-esteem is a lot better since when I first met them. 
a lot of people keep themselves to themselves, so just coming to one of these sessions can, you know, bring out your personality, that gets you to meet new people and socialise. By the residents taking time out in their skincare and their makeup is first step to um, facing the world. And if you're happy within, then the world's your oyster, really. <laughs> We never have no money, you're always in the mood and you're always at the pub. Ugh! Do you know what I did now? Just shut your mouth. She never shuts up. I, I try my best, but it's not good enough. Never. I know I spend too much time in the pub, but it's the best way I can work my depression. Right, I had enough of this, I'm off! Two sorts of stilts. These are learner stilts with great big feet. At first, I thought it was going to be some guy in a clown suit, but it wasn't. He was a very nice gentleman, and uh, he taught me how to move on stilts. That 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 put my self confidence up as well because there was people in that session where I'd never even spoke to before. They will look at something and think, "Oh, I'll never do that." They don't like to try it because they want to think they'll fail. And so by trying easy stuff that they can succeed at, you may be helping them to realise that if they just try something, that maybe they'll get there. If you're feeling down, then you can just go do stuff like the gym or play pool with someone, because then it keeps your mind off all the things that are upsetting you. And I also think the sense of achievement that they get can carry over into other areas, so that by learning to overcome the fear of heights, maybe, and learning to relax in order to master stilts, that sense of tension that you get going into an interview, maybe you're learning to control that as well, so it sort of crosses over into other areas of their lives. And what this programme has allowed us to do is to train staff in over 100 foyers across England in life coaching techniques to deliver positive health messages in their one-to-one -one, um, engagement with young people. When you saw me last, you know, I mean, I weren't really socialising with people. So we'd start looking at goals in three months and do life coaching, working with a young person to figure out where, what they really need to do to achieve these little steps before they move on to the bigger objective and the bigger objective, which might be getting a job, um, doing a gym instructor's course. Now I am doing everything I can to keep myself active. I'm trying to join the army, so I'm at the gym all the time, doing running and weights and everything. Uh, I couldn't do none of that without the fire. Yeah, I do. I think I've learned that I'm more capable of doing things that I didn't think I was capable of doing, like the kayaking, the rock climbing and the quad biking. 
now I'm going to college to do outdoor leisure to be a rock climbing instructor. So I've got a real passion for it since doing it on the health programme. One of the other great things about this programme has been that it's encouraged foyers to look outside beyond the, the, the foyer itself uh, to establishing partnerships with um, both the public sector and other voluntary organisations in the local community. And it's about liaising with the local community, letting them see that young people aren't this image of all hoodies which some people have, and that young people aren't intimidating. And it's about putting these positive activities here, and we let them be known in the community. If uh, young people invest in their health and well-being, that has a massive impact on their ability to move the rest of their lives on. I've started college doing a computing course, so which I didn't think I could do before. I've changed as a person. I've seen life completely differently. When I first moved in the foyer, I had nothing, but now I've got most things in my life sorted out. I'd advise all young people to just get involved and do as much as you can with the foyers. Look up, chin up. Nothing's impossible, and to be honest, that programme's shown it now.